Hi, everyone. It's Ann Duffy, and welcome to Dental Entrepreneurs, the Future of Dentistry's podcast. I am so happy that you're with me today, and I've got a very special guest. We're like buddies. We just actually met each other recently face-to-face over Zoom. We became fast friends, and we are actually creating this together because tech has not been our friend today. I'm really excited to have you meet Kirk Barrett, been known in the industry forever. I saw him the first time at the dental meeting speaking, and he had the audience just right in the palm of his hands. Kirk, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. I'm a little, a little nervous, you know, because nervous. Well, you're one of the heroes in dentistry for a lot of different reasons. And so I'm just excited to be here to talk about anything. Well, I am so glad. Again, I think the two of us can talk to anybody. And I feel like I'm meeting a twin of another mother here because I just love what you're doing. I love how you do it. And I love the future that you hold in dentistry. But let me tell everybody a little bit about you before we get started. Kirk Barrett speaks and consults with dentists all over the world on how to create a better practice and a better life. As one of dentistry's top seminar leaders and online education platform experts, Kirk has invested more than 25 years of his professional life optimizing the best systems and practices within the dental industry. He and his company, Act Dental, have been consistently ranked as one of the top dental consultants in dentistry for the last eight years by Dentistry Today. You are pretty special, Kirk. Welcome again to the Future of Dentistry podcast. You are so kind. And when we get together and we hang out, you're going to be completely underwhelmed. So it'll be so fun. Doubt that. I know so many people that have been in your program, they've joined you in your associations, your mentorship, and you've got a new magazine out for about two and a half years. So we have a lot in common as far as that goes, even though you're a teacher. You are somebody that is a coach and a teacher, and you really bring it to the dental industry. In fact, when I was waiting to get on, I loved your little video before I could join, just on the testimonials from the ACT Dental and the people that were talking about you. I think you've really changed their life, and it makes me really appreciate the name of what you've created, Better Practice and a Better Life. Tell me a little bit about like how did you come up with that, and why does that resonate so much? not only with you, but the dental practices and the dentists that you bring into the fold. Yeah, thank you for asking that because that's one of my favorite things. I would love to tell you, oh, it was some magical thing, but it's really a value-based thing. So as we were trying to figure out things, now I'll go way back to my parents because my parents are my hero. My dad is like my hero still is. And growing up, my dad was like, we do the right thing. You hear me? We always do the right thing. No one talks to mom that way. Like my dad was the chief repeating officer in our home. So he would say things over and over and it was all value-based. It was, like, I can't tell you exactly what it was, but it was how to act, how to behave, how to do all those things. And I love that. And I realized that not everybody has, I had an, an amazing dad. He's still close to me. We're 20 years apart. So they had me when they were 20. So I also had a young dad. When he was 33, I was 13. And people were like, what? Is that your uncle, your brother? I'm like, that's my dad. I got to hang out with him a lot. So how that all came to be is as we started coaching dental practices, there's a lot of different ways you can approach it. And one of the themes that I'll share today is we had some help with some marketing experts, but they were like, why do you do what you do? I just kept saying over and over again, I believe people can have a life and they can have a great practice and they can have a great family and they can see their kids. I mean, one of the coolest things, if you're listening to this and you're a dentist or you're a dental professional, Dentistry is so noble. You can actually pick your hours. You can pick your patients. You can pick what type of dentistry. You can choose your fees. You can choose when to leave. Everything is a choice. The power of choice is like the most incredible thing in this profession. If you really want to have kids and you want to be part of their lives, you can. And so, I mean, this wasn't an easy path for me. I'll never forget. I had uh, somebody helping me with the business when I was early getting going. You know how this works, Ian. When you get invited to speak, you get invited to speak again and again and again. And so I thought I was really cool because I was speaking at all these meetings. And so this guy was helping me with the business. He goes, hey, can I ask you a question? I go, what? He goes, why'd you have kids? And I was like, oh, that's one of my favorite questions. And I went off and I was starting. He's like, I don't need to know the answer. You do. 
And I was like, whoa, because I was on a plane. And my kids were little. And Sarah, we've been married for 25 years. She was and still is the most amazing human being. So we endured the ups and downs. But there was a certain point where I, like, I don't want to be on an airplane. Now, how that relates to a dental practice is this. There's a lot of stuff out there. This is incredible. There's no rules, too. Like, you can have an amazing practice. You can have 30 practices. You can have one practice. You can practice on Saturdays and Sundays. So everything I do has to check two boxes. It's got to create a better practice and better life. If it only checks one box, we're not going to do it. It just feels icky. Like, if I help people make a lot of money, but their life sucks, no thank you. And if their life is great, but the business isn't great, well, then... What good is that either? Like, I, I have a job to do. So, I don't know. That's kind of where it all originated. From. And the cool thing, we call it our core purpose. It just keeps us aligned on our activities. Like, if it doesn't fit in those two boxes, we don't do it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's so simple, Kirk. A couple of things there. I grew up in a great home and great parents, and I've got super siblings. And I feel like you do with to whom much is given, much is expected. We are meant to like carry on some of that legacy because we've got lucky on those things because you can't always be born into that kind of a culture. So you're actually living that out now and sharing it with others. I love that. And I also love the idea that you've said choice. That's an entrepreneur. I think back on what my husband, who was corporate, probably 23 years, and he really never had the choice that he has as an entrepreneur. You can look at yourself here. You can make your choice. You don't have to have a big office space. You don't have to have a lot of employees working for you. You, yeah. you can do whatever you want. Your happy life is not somebody else's idea of a happy life. So if you're listening out there, that is one of the beautiful things about dentistry. When you own your own practice, you have a choice. There is something really special about that. The good, the bad, and the ugly is on your plate because the choices that you make, but that's where you come in. You can't do it alone. And I think that was a thread that I was listening to when I was listening to the testimonials. We all want a happy practice and a happy life. I applaud you because what you're doing is what our country needs. Let me explain. Like, I love this country too. I love what it stands for. I love what it's about. When my kids were little, Sarah and I flew them to Washington, D.C., and I had them put their fingers in that wall to let them know that those are real human beings that died for this country. And I think it's really special what we have. And while I love this country and I love this profession, it doesn't need more aid. It doesn't need more help. It needs more leaders. It needs more entrepreneurs. It needs people who know how to create economies and who know how to hire. Because when you think about every entrepreneur, they add value to a neighborhood, to a community. Along my journey, I got involved in this organization called EO, and I didn't know what it was all about. I loved it. But their mission was so powerful. Like one guy took me in as a mentor and he was pretty intense, but he said, we need you. I'm going to work with you because I need you and our country needs you to get your business going because 80% of us are going to fail. And I need you to understand how to employ people. I need you to know how to create value because that's going to make our country stronger. And I was like, I never thought of it that way. I was just trying to stay alive. So I think the entrepreneurial aspect of what you're doing, Anne, is tremendous and I can't say enough about it. Well, you also said something else there too. And like, are leaders born or are they made? And I think everybody has leadership in them. And then there are some people that are born with some leader skills. When they're trained, when they're mentored, when they ask for help, when they don't do it alone, then it's like the bell curve. They're even going to go higher up on the top. And that is going to trickle down and be that pebble in the pond of highbrow leadership and then think of all the leaders that you've helped develop. Young dentists, and we've talked about this, they don't get the leadership, the business skills in dental school because apparently there's not enough time. And a lot of times they don't even know that they can grow into leadership until they meet someone like you, you see something in them, and then you help them see it in themselves. You are like such a great cheerleader, but also you give ways to do it. Like here's how you become the leader that you'd always dreamed you wanted to be. I love that too. And Somebody said this not too long ago to me and said, Kirk, you're not really a leader until you create other leaders that create other leaders. And that was an epiphany for me because I always thought leadership was like, oh, I got to develop myself and I've got to inspire people and I've got to motivate them and I've got to create this incredible vision. And while some of that is true, 
it just takes the load off of your shoulders when you say, I just got to grow people. And so now my whole day, I'm talking to you today and I got one other thing to do. I'm going to go watch a double header today. My son playing baseball. I just need to grow other human beings that are way smarter than me. And that becomes so powerful. And I want to go back to the, are leaders born or are they developed? I strongly believe that they are developed. Now, let me explain. That's why places like West Point exist. And I wasn't a born leader. I screwed up so much and I had the help of mentors and I went through Dale Carnegie training. I remember going through that. And I'm like, I'm not paying a thousand dollars to learn how to shake hands. That's so dumb. And I was 20, like 30, 24. And I'm like, I learned so much. And then I took another course and then I took another course and then I went through the training and I'm like, I was on the long track, you know, so can people be leaders? Absolutely. Do you need a title to be a leader? No, everybody can lead. Don't you think? I agree totally on that. I think that's so cool because some people that are listening, they think, well, I wasn't a born leader or it's too late for me to become a leader. Where do I go to get those skills? And it's there. If you want it, you can find it. And you just have to find your tribe, your people, mentors, whatever, and then be a good mentee. It sounds to me like you showed up and you actually soaked it all in. You maybe poo-pooed a little bit until you like got hooked on the fact of growth personal and professional development. I need to take like 10 to 15 minutes to thank everybody that ever helped me and for the grace that they gave me and the patience that they gave me because I wasn't the biggest sponge. I think in life you get knocked down and I think, you know, there's so many cliches like when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Well, I waited a long time and I kept waiting and I kept waiting and there were great people that came into my life. They made me read books. I was telling my kids yesterday, I never read books in high school. Actually, I did read one book. I read The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. That's the only book I I'd ever read. When I got into this role, I had mentors and like, do you want this job? I was like, yes, I want this job. They're like, you're going to have to read. Well, I'm like, I don't know how to read. I can read, but I've never read a book. So I had to read the E-Myth, Seven Habits, Psycho-Cybernetics, Think and Grow Rich, and it just lit my fire. I was like, I just missed out. I went to one dental course. I went to another course. And my wife thinks I should see a therapist for this because we went to the Seattle Study Club Symposium. That was when they had the long course. And she's like, do you like all of these courses every day, all day long. I'm like, yes. She's like, you don't even know what they're saying. I'm like, I just love it. And I always wanted to be a school teacher transparently. Like that was my dream to be a school teacher. And it never worked out for me. And so now I get to be a teacher in some fashion. And then one of the books we give our kids is, oh, the places you will go. You just don't know where this road is going to go. Like people always ask me, how'd you get into this? I'm like, I have no idea. I would have never said I'm going to be that when I grow up. I still don't even want, know what I want to do. That's a beautiful thing, though. You're open. You say yes. You show up. And then life happens. And I, I'm like that, too. People say, how'd you get into this? Accidentally, really. I mean, other than dental hygiene, which was kind of accidental as well. So it is a path that we take. Look, Kirk, if you can do it and I can do it. Anybody can do it and don't sell yourself short on that. But, you know, I want to go back to some of the questions that we were talking about earlier. Like, what do you see as the biggest problem in dentistry right now? What are you trying to solve? So just to give you some perspective before I give you my answer, I'm 54 and we are shooting this in 2024. So I think the biggest challenge right now in dentistry is the amount of information. There's so much information. Now, when I got started, there wasn't a ton of information. You had to go places, you had to reach out. So you had a few technical leaders. Now you can open up a web browser and you get into one Facebook group chat and everybody's got an opinion. There's 25,000 people in there commenting on things. And so I can't even imagine how difficult or how hard it is for a young dental professional to decide what is their true north. And so what I say is like, you got to pick your tribe. At some point, it's going to be a values-based conversation. You're going to go, these are my people. And you'll do what I did, which is you'll chase the financial thing. You'll go, oh, these guys make a lot of money. And you'll go, I don't like them, but they're making a lot of money. And then you'll go, oh, this just feels icky for a while. Whatever it is, I think at the end of the day, your favorite people care about the same things that you care about. Who are you hanging around with? I say to my kids all the time, like, you're the average of the five people you hang around with most. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future right now. And I don't think it's any different for us as adults. Even at 54, I got to go, who am I around every year? And what are they doing? And I got to pick some tough friends. You know, I want some 
friends that'll challenge me. And I love people, but you know, we are the average of the people we hang around with most. So back to what I said, like the hardest thing right now is picking a direction. I ask people, why are you doing this? Well, I saw it on Facebook. I'm like, you're building a second practice because you saw it on Facebook. Why are you adding six more ops? Because I saw this guy and he did it. And I'm like, so where did you see on YouTube? I'm like, is that what you want to do? No, you know, or I'll see people building a huge practice. And I'm like, why are you building this? They're like, well, cause I'm going to get an associate. I'm like, so tell me about your sister. Well, I don't have one yet. I don't want to say anything other than at some point you got to pick your tribe. You got to pick your true North and you got to go, this is who I am. And this is where I'm going to go. And these people, whether it be do, you got to get around mentors that go, you got to go in this direction type of a thing. Cause it saves time. Yeah, it does save time. You're not so scattered. You can be focused and focus is the new time, right? I mean, everyone right. wants time, but I think you're right. You have to follow that star. But I also think one of the things that you teach is balance and the balance right. is the big Thing. We need focus to be balanced and time and balance kind of map on each other. Is it really possible though, Kirk? I mean, I know that you profess that, but in your experience of working with all these dentists, is it possible? Well, first of all, we have to define balance. I would say no, it's not completely possible. And let me explain. Now, I love the conversation and Panky's Cross of Life was one of my first experiences and it makes perfect sense. But I would say this, let me go back to the focus thing if I was gonna dissect this as best I could today. The biggest problem in the world is one thing. We just don't give our best energy to the things that matter most. So whenever you're stressed, you gotta say, what am I giving my energy to the, and does this really matter? So that's the first piece is what matters. I think balance is this. You only have a bucket that's this big. It's called a container. You could use the old adage of like, you put the rocks, pebbles, sand in there, but it's very, very true. Like I'm gonna get the big things in there, I'm going to put the little things in next and then I'll put the other things in there and whatever doesn't fit in there works. I like the idea of keeping work as a container. It's Monday to Friday. It's from eight to four or it's seven to three or it's nine to five. You pick and it fits in the container. Now here's your challenge. You, whoever's listening, has to get better about what goes in that container. Time is the new rich focus. I love that too. Like Everybody, the best kept secret of the rich is how they use their 24 hours. And so when you're adding hours to make money, that's not very smart. You know, that's short-sighted. You're going to be me in no time. If you're 34, listen to this. Don't negate this. You're going to blink and you're going to be me and you're going to go, what the heck happened? That went so fast. And so I'm a big fan of like, let's get the big things in first. And I'll give you a perfect scenario. We have a lot of people that come to us. They're working five days a week. I'm like, why are you working five days a week? Well, it's just, it's hard. I, I got to pay bills. I'm like, okay, how old are your kids? They go six, four, two. I go, do you want to watch them grow up? They go, yes. All right. So you're going to go seven to three, four days a week. What? I go, yes, you are. My practice is going to die. I go, no, it's not going to die. Or you can pick the hours, eight to four. It doesn't matter. I want you to get the why clear. And so what we have a lot of our dentists do is take a photo of those kids and put it right on the counter. And so when they talk to a patient, say, Mrs. Jones, thanks for coming in today. Hey, I just want to let you know we're going to be changing our hours. Point to those gorgeous little kids and go, that's the reason why. They will get it. You don't need to explain things. You can just say, that's my why. And so when they go, can't you see me at seven o'clock at night? Say, no, unfortunately I can't. And if they don't understand that, I really wonder if I'd want to give up my evening hours to serve people that don't care because your kids and your family need you. They have an emotional need for you. So do I think balance can be done? Absolutely. Anyone that isn't balanced, like let's not call it equal time and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to get the big things in. For me, I'll give you mine. It's seven hours of sleep. Six is okay, but it's not optimal. I got to get one hour of exercise. I got to get my big meetings in the morning. And then you can throw anything in my schedule in the afternoon. And I am out of here by 4.30, 5 o'clock. I guarantee you. I get mad at people. If the lights are on here at five, you're in trouble. You know what I mean? So like, let me ask you, do you think balance is possible? Or how would you define balance? Well, I define balance by having, you know, my buckets filled, my big buckets. I, you know, I have to have spiritual, I have to have physical, I have to have work. I have certain things that are, are just non-negotiables. I love that you're giving that, again, choice for dentists to show them that it is possible. And I think looking back, that's honestly why I'm an entrepreneur. Also, I like my life and I like to have choices. I like to be able to, I do yoga at 1030 in the morning. So that's not optimal for a lot of people, but I have that carved out of my day. So I'll start mm. early. I love to go to mass. I go to mass every morning. I start early and get my 
had going in the morning, like your big meetings, like you were saying, and then the afternoon you can fill it up. I am toast. I don't know if I would say I stop every day at five o'clock. I know myself I'm toast. And I think most people aren't. I'm in the East Coast, so it's really tough. I do not like night meetings or night webinars. I do them occasionally because we're, you know, we're a national company, Kirk. So I try to like help everybody. But like you, I'm trying to kind of step back and let the leaders show up because there are people out there that would love to help lead our platforms. And we have to let go of some of the control and let them do that because that's how they shine. That's how they realize their potential. Balance is really important. And we only have so much time. And I'm looking at my life. I wish I would have known someone like you to be able to set that tone early on. Again, if you're young, you can't get it back, right? Right. So you might as well start early making those choices for a better practice and a better life. I'm sure you could echo this sentiment too. Like we agree the same thing. Like you just got to get the important things in. The other thing too, I'll just share with all of you. I've been clinically diagnosed as a wuss. Like I'm a wimp. I hate conflict. I sweat. So I had some people teach me how to say no. Like I couldn't say no. So if you wanted to do a meeting at night, I'd go, okay. And then I would have to deal with Sarah being upset. So that's one thing you have to learn. People ask me, can you talk in the evenings? Nope. Can you do a Saturday? Absolutely not. Can you talk before work? Nope. So what they do is they go, okay, when can you ultimately? So they start fitting into your schedule. So that's a big thing. The other thing too, to keep in mind, I mean, you don't have to get your life perfect, but somebody told me this, take care of the moments and then the years take care of themselves. Let me say that again. If you take care of the moments, you won't look back at the years and go, where did all that go? You'll go, that was great. And so what that means to me at this age is I got all my kids coming home today. So I got a 23-year-old, I got a 21-year-old, I got an 18-year-old, and I got a 16-year-old. Now, I'll tell you what's going to happen all summer. There's going to be kids coming in and out of my kitchen and 20-year-old kids that I saw when they were kids. I have to subscribe to surrendering when I get home. Like, whatever happens, I'm in. Whoever's walking through the kitchen, whatever's happening. So for me, I'm done at five. It doesn't mean I don't stop thinking and I got other things to do, but like, Oh, man, there's four kids in the kitchen downstairs. Let's go. What are you guys doing? How's your dad? Where have you been? How are you doing? That's my favorite stuff. And I'm like, you're all grown up. Look at you. You got like a beard now. And I think the cool thing about this great industry is when you get your practice or your business right, you can enjoy the moments and say, I love this. And you can be more grateful every day. But it's not easy. It's also showing up and being present. Again, that's focus on who's in front of you right there, right now, because you're right. Those precious moments, that's what you remember. You don't remember, you know, being at the office five extra hours or whatever a night doing something that really is meaningful. Or I like what you were saying about being focused on your tribe. Facebook and all of that could just be a time suck. I think we're going to look back and like, how much time did we waste looking at other people's lives instead of working on our own life? As we wrap up, Kirk, I would love you to just like whittle it down to three things that you could tell any dentist for a better practice and a better life. And if you could whittle it down to three, what would it be? Yeah, it's probably always going to be the same three. So I really only have one big regret in my life. I wish I would have figured out who I was earlier in life. And let me explain. So I started doing the DISC and the Colby and Working Genius and all of these personality tests and getting feedback. And when I got older, I'm like, wow, I really suck at a lot of these things. And they're like, yes, you do, because that's not who you are. So I'll give you an example. I took the Colby A index. I encourage everybody to do it. I had Kathy Colby read it. Now, her maiden name is Wonderlick. So that'll tell you the family she came from. And she's like, okay, let me tell you who you are. And she explained who I was. I laughed out loud. She goes, I don't know if you're tall. I don't know if you're short. I'm telling you. I couldn't breathe, Anne. I was laughing so hard because she described me perfectly. She's like, you're the worst finisher in the world. When they say you shouldn't chew gum and walk, you are a perfect example of that. You can't finish a sentence. I'm like, I can't. She's like, you should never try to do details. I'm like, I hate them. And she was telling me, I do this all the time with professionals that work against themselves. So that's one thing. And so my daughter is 23 and she's like, dad, I'm taking this disc test. I'm like, I'm so happy for you. Because the earlier you find out who you are, the more you don't work against yourself. You're like, I'm really bad at those things. You also find out what you're really good at. And so I would go all chips in on learning who I was. Even if I was 50 listening to this, I would take every test on the planet right now 
and go, that's who I am. And then lean into that, right? 100%. What you're good at. Yeah, I tried to run this company for a long time and it was great, but it was messy. And now I have a CEO who loves details. He counts pennies. He's got everything organized. He says things and they're like, he's so nice. I'm like, I say that you guys get mad, you know, like type of thing. So now I get to be the fun guy and the idea guy. But I wish that for everybody is I want you to know who you are and go to work and go, this is who I am. So that would be number one. Number two is... Let me say this. Core values is the most important thing you will ever do. And here's why. Now, everybody talks core values. I talk core values. And then I finally got a coach and he was pretty intense. He came to our office. He's like, where are your core values? I was like, oh, I love this. He's like, tell me. I go, I'll tell you about my core values. I went on and on. He goes, where are they? I go, well, they're in here. I said, karate in here, not out there. You know, this is what he said to me. Shut up. I was like, what? He's like, core values are written. They are everywhere. They're your flag in the ground. They're non-negotiable behaviors for how people behave here at work. And I refuse to work with you unless you put them everywhere. I want them on coffee cups. I want them on your manual. I want you to go, this is who we are. And I did it. And I was like, all right, I'll just do it. It's so crazy. And like, once you put the flag in the ground, you go, This is non-negotiable. If you're going to work here, this is how we behave. Now, let me explain. Core values are not excellence. They're not like aspirational words that nobody knows. They're simple, easy things on how we behave. Here's my number one. I want people who are like all in. I'll take out the trash. I bust tables. No job is beneath me. I'll do anything. I don't care. I want people that are like, I'm all in. So I think when you can put those in the ground. Now, the benefit of number two is crazy stuff goes away. Once you put the flag in the ground, core values, it's like crazy stuff repellent. You don't have like, people are like, you're not going to believe what happened at work. And I'm like, well, that doesn't happen at my office. And they're like, what are you, have a unicorn at your office? I'm like, no, I refused to put up with that crap years ago. Wouldn't you agree? Like, I went to your website, I'm reading all your principles. Like, that's your guiding stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. And we stick to that. And it feels so good because it's right for us. Like you said, find your tribe. So you'll come, maybe stay just for hors d'oeuvres and not stay for dessert because we may not be your tribe, but we know who we are, right? We know who we are. I love that. What's number three? My number three, you just said it. It's find your tribe. You got to find your people. And so for me, you know, Sarah's my tribe, like comes from such an amazing family. Like my wife's first gift that she gave me when we were dating was a Bible. It had my name on it. I had buddies that made fun of me. She's like, no, this is how this works. I was like, I got it. I'm all in. So uh, you got to find that tribe because when you find the right people, the values piece of it, then you bring them in and you start to create a team around you. Like People say, oh, a team is an amazing piece of it. No, I always ask people in a conference or lecture, like how important is it having the right team members? And they go very, I'm like, okay, let's just go there. Scale from one to 10. They go, well, it's a 10. I go, no, it's not. It's 12. Like when you find the right people, your life gets better. And I think that's the jam is like, number one, figure out who you are. Lean into that. Let everybody else know. We do user manuals here, which means I have to write out my disk and all those things. And then I have to write it out how to communicate with me. And you can't see my door here, but I actually have my working genius. This is who I am. So before you come in this room, you're going to know I'm messy. I'll show you this. So my team gave me this. If you're watching it, it's pig pen. <laughs> they call me pig pen around here. I'm the messiest human being you've ever seen. I love people. I love a party. I love stories. But if you give me a spreadsheet, it's going to be a disaster when you get it back. So get your values right and surround yourself with the right people. And really what you're going to find are the other problems take care of themselves. So that's mm-hmm. what I would say. What would you say? I would say find out who you are. Know what your strengths are. Lean into those and find other people that have other strengths and other gifts and work together. I think that's the key. And that's why I'm in a super spot with my team right now. I mean, I just get off every Zoom with them feeling great, really do appreciate each other, respect each other. This is funny because people ask, so Tom and I will be married 49 years in August and he's my person. And he always has been since he stood up at the bar that we met in. And I was like, oh, he's very (laughs) cute. But uh, people say, how do you do it? And it does boil down to your team. I mean, for us, God is at the center. That's one. And honestly, Kirk, it's funny. I don't care who someone's higher power is. I just think it's important to have a high power to know that it's just not all you. There's something greater than you that leads our hearts and our minds. Number one, we laugh all the time. Number two, we respect each other. Number two, and we're we both find each other very cute and want to be around each other. That's a good team member. Of course, you've got to 
plug in all the things that they have to do. Like the front office person is going to be different than the hygienist and all of these things. And that helps with the personality. I love the working genius. I actually wrote that down. I haven't taken it yet, but I'm going to do it. Oh, it's life changing. Super neat assessment. I think I mentioned to you, we base do Dental Entrepreneur Woman on strengths finders. Because again, when I found out what my top five strengths were, I'm like, I leaned in because I didn't like them right away. Now I just adore them. It made me really fall in love with myself and also fall in love for others for what they bring. And I think that's what makes the world go round. And that's something that is important to you. And I know it's important to me. And I'm just so thrilled that I got to spend this time with you. You are awesome. I don't care how messy you are. I like you very much. And I want to spend more time with you in the future. How does any get in touch with you, Kirk? You know, how do they find you if they want to have a better practice and a better life? Yeah. So the easiest way, I mean, we just, we love the, our podcast. We just have a lot of fun doing it. It's called the best practices show. Join in. It's easy. It's free. You're going to hear conversations. You know, you're on my podcast. The other thing that's so cool about this industry is it's so noble. When you really meet the people that are influencers, they're built with teachers' hearts. So they really want to help. So I'm always like fascinated. Like, how did you do this? What are you doing? Like, so it's an easy way. And then uh, our website is actdental.com. And we just try to create a lot of information. At the end of the day, I want people to be inspired. I want them to say, I can do this. That's what it's all about. I'm so glad to call you my friend. So this is so great. This is so great. So, you know, it's like, Better practice, better life, and a better world. So thank you, Amen. 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 All right. You have the best day. Have a great weekend. I'm glad that you're going to the ball game today with the kids. Sounds like a perfect day. And enjoy yourself. And anyone that's listening to us now, remember to keep doing you. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.